with potential negotiations with our partner municipalities. I'm going to ask uh, your indulgence in having that presentation in camera when we're done here. That goes into some detail around, around what that means. So to move on to the, uh, to the investment readiness. So what is investment readiness? Investment readiness is all part of the, it's, it's, it's kind of the early stages of getting ready for investment attraction. I, uh, when I put together the RFP for the, um, for the information uh, package, you know, I titled it just as council had asked for information package. And then as I was putting together the details of what we were looking for to try and tell the, the, um, the consultants, potential, potential bidders, what it was we were looking for, I thought about things like target market, like who, what's, if it's an information package for whom? And, and so what do we want to put in the information package? And I, I got thinking about that process. There's really, there's really a bit of work needs to be done in terms of identifying assets and then targeting at an appropriate audience. So I did that, I, I put that out, and then I went on the, uh, on the 6th of March, I went to a, a session on investment readiness put on by NSBI, Nova Scotia Business Inc. And for those that might not know, NSBI is, is, the, is sort of an arm of, of government that is tasked with attracting uh, foreign investment in the form of corporations, but it's also, they also work on, um, on uh, exporting, helping existing Nova Scotia companies find uh, foreign markets. So they, they're sort of that interface between Nova Scotia and, and, and uh, global business. And so they were talking to us CAOs and economic development officers about investment readiness because in order for them to be successful for instance in attracting a business to Nova Scotia they have to know what's on the ground in the communities in the different regions and frankly they don't have that they have it a little bit in some areas some areas are doing a pretty good job of this I would su suggest but there is no consistency across the province and and some areas aren't in it, into it at all so they invited us in and they had uh, this fellow uh, Eric McSweeney. Now, Eric, um, they, they refer to him as the guru of, uh, of investment attraction in, in Canada. He's a professor at, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Waterloo, and he also does consulting. So he talked to us about how investment readiness and investment attraction um, uh, relate. Investment readiness is really, it's, it's, the, it's the assembling of the data. It's gathering the information about your community. It's, and that's everything from your, from your socioeconomic to, to the very minute, what buildings are there that are available, what spaces are available, what land is available, what services are available, at what cost, and, and the whole thing. And, and Mr. McSweeney went through and he gave us some examples of the, of the level of detail that businesses use when they're making a decision uh, on where not to go. And, and that's the way he kind of described it is, is when a, it's a process of elimination when, when a business is looking at, at locating. And they always consider, of course, expanding where they're at. But they also consider where are the, where are the other high probability areas that have, that have what we're looking for. Now, some large corporations have people internally that do that work for them. And other, other corporations uh, hire it out. They hire consultants. And we've had recent experience with a couple of these consultants. Those of you who are involved with the airport will remember uh, the Kestrel Kestrel uh, Airlines, it was a, it's a plane that has yet to be certified, but the company that, that manufactures it or is planning to manufacture it was looking for a place to, to uh, advance their, uh, their testing and so on to get, to, get to, to having it certified and then go into production. Well, they had hired a site selector to, to help them find a place to, uh, to do, continue the work. They ultimately settled on a, on a place in, in Maine, but they did visit us. And the reason they visited us is that the site selector they hired happened to know something about our airport. He had landed there once. So when he was thinking about the kind of airspace and whatnot that they, they might need, he brought them in to come talk to Yarmouth. We've also had experience with the, uh, the technology park. Uh, the fellow who was hired, uh, to, I think, C CFN consultants that looked at the, I don't know, 70 or so air, air strip airports in Atlantic Canada to look at that technology, uh, unmanned uh, technology. He is doing a site selector process for them. And what they do is they look at all the important attributes to their business coming and locating at, a, at, a, at an area, and then they go through process of elimination. They try and find the highest probability location, and they look at risk. What is, you know, what is the risk associated with each, with each location? So 
you know, what are, what are your advantages, disadvantages, and, and, and if there's risk around the advantages, whether it's political risk or, or business risk, what, what have you, then, you know, they, they ultimately make a business decision. And uh, so, assembling the data so that you can answer the question, and the way this sometimes goes is that they do, they do this on fairly short notice. So the first process, first step a consultant typically does is they go and they gather information from the internet. And so you'll notice that some some communities, and Hamilton, Ontario is, is a good example, uh, they've got a, a site selector part of their municipal website. And so you can go on there and you can find all kinds of data about, about what they have available in their city for businesses looking to locate. And they don't contact you in the first instance. They go out and they see what they can gather from public sources, including your website. When they've, list, when they've got it down to, to a list, and it might be anywhere from six to 20, then they start making contact. And the way the contact sometimes goes is it could be you get a fax or a phone call followed by a fax, three pages of information they want, and they want it back in 24 to 72 hours. Why do they do that? Well, they do that because they want to eliminate those that aren't ready. Those that don't know their stuff, those that need to scramble and, and can't, can't get their act together will be eliminated. They want to go to, a, to an area that, is, that knows what they have and, and can answer their questions and will be easy to work with. So if you, if you make it to the next step, which would be a site visit, so the, now you're dealing not only with the site selector, but you're dealing with executives from the company coming and visiting your site, they'll ask you to do a number of things and arrange a number of things when they make their visit. If you cannot do that, if you can't get the president of the Chamber of Commerce and you can't get you know, the, the uh, CEO of, of, the, of the health center and, and CEO of, of other companies in the area to sit down with them, on, then, then you're not working with your business community and that's an indicator of it. Your business community is not working for you and in those interviews, if they get them, they will ask about the town. They'll ask about the business climate, they'll ask about the labor market and they'll ask questions like, should we come? Are you happy here? What are, you know, not just happy, but is it working for you and do you think it would work for us? All that to say is, is that in, in, in all honesty, it, it, it is a case where we are not ready. We are not ready because we haven't collected this data. NSBI knows it because they're, out, they're trying to shop for foreign investment and they have little to put on the plate. So what are they doing? They have hired uh, McSweeney to help them develop templates and the templates will be shared with municipalities and RENs, and they'll be populating these templates with data that they can, they can acquire from provincial sources and keep up to date. So, for instance, it makes no sense for every municipality in Nova Scotia to gather power rates to put in to the template. That, that's standard across the province. So they will do that kind of stuff. Uh, they, <coughs> they will then provide the templates to municipalities and RENs, and we can use it as we see fit. My suggestion is, is that if we are going to be successful in attracting seniors, attracting businesses that might match up well with our, our area, then we should, we should do this exercise because NSBI, they're the people out there talking to the foreign companies. They're the first point of contact. And if we're not ready, if we don't give them the data, well, they're going to look at the communities where they have the data because NSBI wants to, wants to obviously have the best opportunity to bring in bring in the foreign investment, they look good in that situation. They're not going to bring a company and a, or a site selector and their executive to Yarmouth because they think we might have it. They need to know we have it because it embarrasses everybody if it's a waste of time and money to show up, if, the, if what they thought we had, we don't actually have. So, so the investment readiness is, is, is critically important. So what do you do after you've assembled the data? Well, you do some analysis. You look at sectors. and. And McSweeney uh, said he's a bit of a guru on this stuff, but he's got some other, some other tools that he's developed. And one of the tools is he's looked at different, different sectors, different business sectors, and he's, cr he's looked at his long list of, of, of data criteria that, that you assemble, and he's looked at every sector and he said, okay, that's a high important and that's a low important. He's gone down through the list. So what you then do after you've, after you've assembled your data, there's an opportunity to actually focus a bit, to say, Okay, where, what do we match up best with? Well, I would suggest we'd match up pretty good with seafood, seafood sector, but there may be other sectors that, are, that we're not thinking about that we match up best with. So we can focus maybe our, our economic development strategy on trying to, in, to, to generate investment from particular sectors. And that leads you to what are the assets that we want to highlight in our collateral, in our marketing strategy 
Right? So it gets to the question of what is in the information package. Well, the, what's in the information package really depends on who you're going after and who you have the best chance of, of reeling in. And, and so this was a little bit of my thought process when I was developing the RFP, but I certainly had the focus sharpened for me when I attended the workshop with NSBI. They are interested in working with us, an example of that, uh, when, I, when I sat down at the workshop and uh, uh, met their Director of Investment Readiness, again, Rhonda McDougall, she's been to a, a REN meeting, uh, she said, I want to talk to you when we're done. At the end of the meeting, uh, she offered to, uh, through a, a link with the um, uh, Department of Labor and Advanced Education, to come in and do a, um, a basically a community profile, labor market profile of our region. Uh, they, have, they have funding to do this, and they had enough funding to do one more REN uh, this fiscal year if they signed a deal. And so that opportunity, we were able to, to secure that, and, and that, is, that is underway. So part of the data we'll be looking for to, to provide to NSBI and also to inform ourselves, we are going to get through uh, some work that NSBI has helped us to get uh, with uh, labor and advanced education. So that is, I believe that's underway. Alain, when I was away, Alain polled the members of the REN. Everybody seemed in favor of taking this free opportunity to generate data and uh, we'll have that in fairly short order. So NSBI is, is, uh, is interested in working on this. And so how does this inform um, the other, we'll go back a slide, the professional promoter of the information package in the senior friendly community? Well, the professional po promoter and the information package, they're, they're pieces of it. I see the information package is kind of, kind of being at the collateral part of this. If you look at my third bullet, then the steps, the assembling the data, then the, you do your SWOT sector and competitive analysis, you do your strategy, your marketing plans, and you develop your collateral. And I think we kinda, we've gotten a little ahead of, we've, we're seeing the tip of the iceberg, I guess is, is, is one way of saying it. When you talk to, to somebody from another community and you talk to them about, about investment in their community, attracting business, and if they've got a, a nice brochure, well done, they're gonna show that to you. Because they're, they're not gonna go in the office, fire up the computer and show you their database. But the flashy brochure doesn't mean a thing if it isn't based on, on real facts. And, and it doesn't mean a thing if it isn't focused on, on high probability um, sectors or businesses to, or in this, in this case perhaps demographics to bring to our community. So the idea of a senior friendly community, I'll ju just jump to that bullet for a second. It relates because if we know what we have in the community, we've talked about this, I've talked about this with individual counselors. We talk about our health center, we talk about our sidewalks, we talk about our climate, all the things that we have that we know, our low cost of living, um, all the things that we know about our community that are attractive to seniors, but there's probably other things. And this exercise of putting together the data and, and then focusing, if we wanna focus on seniors, uh, of putting together the package and then where do we, you know, developing the marketing plan so it's not, just a brochure or whatnot, but, it, but it's a plan, a longer term plan to attract seniors. If you need clarification, I guess that's, that's <laughs> clarification. Yeah, um, so that's, that's where I am. So to Phil's question about, about the, uh, the do, you want, do you wanna maybe restate the question? What I see, sorry, I'll, I'll say this and then I'll, I'll shut up for a second. Is, is that I see if you're gonna do this seriously, you need a position, right? This is not gonna happen on a, and, and it, needs to be, it needs to be a methodical, focused investment. So what I see from my, not, 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 a, not a shotgun approach at all, because I, I don't know if I put it on the slide here. Yes, I did. 70% of the new jobs that will be created in the community, and this is statistic, you hear this one all the time, but it's true. 70 to 80 percent of the investment in your community, new jobs created, come from existing businesses. And so what McSweeney said is don't forget to mow your own backyard. Don't forget to be talking to your own businesses about their expansion plans because you know what? You could be darn sure that other businesses, other municipalities are talking to web.com, right? They're talking to our major employers. You know, they're talking to, to McDonald, Chisholm, Trask about where, where they're headquartered because you know, if they're in the news and they're hiring a few people because of it, you know what we do, right? We see something about medical marijuana, we're writing a letter, 
right? Other municipalities are doing it too, and you can be sure that the presidents and CEOs are opening their drawer, and they got a stack of them. And they're, they're, you mow your own backyard first because you hope you can keep them. And I don't think we're doing a job of that right now. So part of the job of the, of the position is to mow our own backyard, talk to our own companies, make sure that we're treating our own people well. I, I talked about this with, with a couple of people, is that, you know, when, when people come in and they, they're, they're trying to get a development permit or a building permit, that's investment in our community, whether it's at the residential level or the commercial level. That's a business perhaps expanding or improving. And we should be rolling out the red carpet the same way we do when, when somebody comes in off the street and says, hey, you know, I'm thinking about manufacturing an airplane and I'm looking at your area. We should be rolling out the red carpet for our businesses and our citizens and not, not making it difficult for them Obviously, we have to uphold the building code and the fire code and all those things, but we need to help them to get through the maze of bylaws and, and, and codes to, to be successful. So I see it as a full-time position with, with really a couple roles. It's investment readiness, uh, and, and that, may lead, that will obviously lead to, to a business attraction, investment attraction, but I also see it as the breathing, the business retention and expansion. And all that is, in simple terms, is talking to your businesses, knowing what they're doing, what the plans are, talking to them. So when you get an idea, you can probably pull together a couple people uh, who are involved in business in your community, bounce some ideas around, and maybe get somebody to, to partner. Well, the REN is in the process right now of uh, they've, they've agreed on a recruiter to help them hire the CEO. It's going to take them a little time to get their, their feet under them. I think the REN is, is, is going to be very interested in doing this, but I think in, in a community by community basis, like Town of Yarmouth, Municipality of Yarmouth, Municipality of Argyle, if we can take and do, do this stuff ourselves and feed it to the REN, we, we allow them to hit the ground running, and we're sure ourselves that, that we're not some aspect of this is not being overlooked. You know, I, I think, I think, and particularly on the Bree side, the business retention and expansion, the talking to the businesses, it's important that the town be involved in that, right? We, we set the legislative or the, the bylaw framework for businesses to, to operate and exist in the community. So we need to talk to them. We need to know what the hurdles are, what the issues are, and we need to be working ourselves and with the REN and anybody else we can to make things easier to make ourselves more attractive for investment. We need, we need to represent ourselves, for sure. We need to, we, you know, nobody else is going to represent the town of Yarmouth as well as the town of Yarmouth. You know, the REN will represent the region, but, and, and we should, we should, if we're thinking at all that we're competing within the region, we should get that thinking out of our head, right? We are, the municipalities that are in the REN are not competing with one another. We're competing with the world to, to attract investment and to keep, to keep our businesses here. So we need to think broader than that. And, and everything that we do as a town on this file, if we, if we invest in this, is for the betterment of the region. And, and if other municipalities do the same, we will benefit from that and we need to work closely with them. But I, I think we, we, we should not, based on our, our desire to increase the tax base and to be more open and inviting, I think we need to do our own homework. And we need to get active on this. And if we're going to be successful, to be active on this, make our own investments, and also support wholeheartedly the regional approach. Okay. So I'll just move a couple slides down. Oh, sorry, Ken.
Okay, so so one of the things that um, that we talked about uh, in on, on March 6 at this uh, investment readiness um, workshop, I'll call it, is is that it really is not one brochure. It's a marketing strategy, you know, with a, with maybe multiple focuses. Like in our case, we're talking about a particular demographic that we think we can in, we can attract, um, you know, population, right? So so you create a, a separate set of because it's different criteria, different interests, right? There, you create a separate brochure or, or marketing strategy towards that group if you think the uh, food processing industry might be an industry that, that we're attractive to then you would create a separate uh, marketing strategy for that industry because obviously they're interested in, in different things than, than how many tennis courts do you have kind of thing right so um, yeah so it, it is not one brochure it is it is strategy with with Exactly. You start with where, you, where, your reason, where your assets are. It's asset-based community economic development. I, I, I f Sorry, I just flipped back to this slide because when I talked about this before, I said that I cut off at a certain point. Well, I cut off, and, and one of the things I noticed at this section, which was the top part of what I, what I got out of the ag aggregate of the, uh, of the council uh, priorities, is that for the most part, these things agree very much with what, with what Jerry and I came up with ourselves and we did that without looking at this the only one that's significantly different is at the very top here which is the sell properties now we didn't identify that as as uh, as as a high priority in our top four and we're not saying that we shouldn't do it we're just saying that when we looked at it we looked at bang for the buck how can we how can we do increase the tax base. Now, we could sell properties, and I talked to one councillor about the idea, well, if we want to change our approach to selling properties, you know, we could talk about an auction. You know, we could talk about taking a number of properties, hiring an auctioneer, advertising this, auction the properties off. Let the market determine what the value is. You can set a, set a um, reserve bid on any particular property and sell them off. Then they're not out there with signs on them for six months or nine months telling the, telling the, uh, telling the world that the properties aren't selling, we hold an auction with the sole purpose of divesting um, some of these vacant, serviceable, serviced uh, lots in our community. So if I could just move down to this um, slide. So I got from, from Ken, Dan, and Phil uh, some information in terms of investment on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the strategies. And as I said before, um, most of the other councillors seem to, to struggle a little bit with how much to put on the various um, strategies. So I took their numbers because, because their, theirs were uh, uh, consistent and they seem to, to, they seem to agree with me, so I'd like to know. <laughs> no, but they, you know, they, they made big investments in some things and, and, and not in other things. And so, uh, so I lined theirs up against what, what Jerry and I came up with, and, there, and as you can see here, there's, there's a high degree of consistency between where they thought we should invest money and where we thought we should invest money, which, which gave me some, some heart in that, in that you know, we're probably not all wrong. And the fact that we're, we're looking at things somewhat similarly is, is I think, I think a good sign. So I just threw that up really for information. And at the end of the day, in a budget process, it matters how much money and where we're going to put it. And so Jeff and Jerry would suggest these numbers. Uh, Ken, Dan, and Phil suggested the numbers above. Um, it's somewhere in that range, so we're talking, you know, probably a four hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollar investment if we want to cover off those strategies within you know this year. If we want to work on those strategies, and so uh, we can we can argue and talk about the number, and we can talk about where it's allocated, but I I suggest to you that there's there's fair amount of agreement around the types of strategies that fall under these these four categories, or at least at least three of them. <laughs> the fourth one, the tax agreements, we'll talk about in a in a little while. Okay, no, no, okay, so, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Yeah. Like think. Yeah, yeah. It, we we didn't provide didn't provide many words as far as hints in terms of what we were talking about, and so there were other ones that were that were a bit confusing as well. But that's the way we interpreted it was looking at all of these intermunicipal agreements and the tax arrangements around those, and and coming to some general broad consensus about how we should how we should deal with those. And as I said, I, because that will be a negotiation with our municipal partners, I would like to discuss that strategy today. And in camera. Now, knowing that, knowing what I just said, I would be more agreeing with that that it's a fair approach. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, we need, we may have to pay good bucks. I mean, reality is nowadays salaries, gone are the days of the $15 an hour promoter. You know what I mean? You need somebody who knows what they're doing. And, you know, I hate to say it, you may have to bring somebody in from the outside, but in some respects that's a good thing, uh, especially with something like this because they're coming in looking. I know we already had one attempt that didn't work too well, but um, I really think that we really narrowed the parameters and really work at it. I agree with what Danny was saying, um, that the whole concept of promoting Yarmouth is a win-win for Yarmouth. I, the REN is a wonderful thing, and it's doing its thing, and there's elements it's doing, but I think we've got to start looking after our own community, and I think this promoter will, will be the way of doing it. And of course, number C, we're bringing up tonight, but uh, you know, I know people don't like this. Uh, there was a string on Facebook this week, and I think we're now up to 290 comments on it, uh, and, we're, and still going. Um, but the question was, is it, it, to me it's a job. Um, I had a lady contact me on the weekend. She's coming to Yarmouth. She will have a pension of $57,000 a year until she dies. She is selling her house in Calgary. She is going to make a little over a million dollars. The deal's almost done. She's moving to Yarmouth. She's bought a house in this town, and she's going to spend a couple hundred thousand on the house. Now, can anyone tell me what's wrong with that? That is a job. That's a very high-paying job coming into this community. She's going to be here. She, she can't get fired. The only way she's going to get fired is if she dies. That's it. You know, and she's married, so her husband keeps half the job. I mean, that's the way the deal goes. So we really are missing the boat. And I, I know I've heard in the last month of three or four other similar circumstances where people are looking at, at coming here. Um, one of the comments made uh, on Facebook, and I loved it, uh, that if you're over 70, you're in the grave. Uh, it's kind of scary. I uh, only got a few years left, and that's so wrong. That is so wrong. That's such a negative view. The other comment was made is that seniors do not bring in youth. Wrong. Go look at the profiles. What is your growth industry in Yarmouth? Hair salons. You're looking massages. You're looking at physiotherapists. You're looking at those service industries for seniors. There's a lot of that, and those are young people, and they bring their families. It's it's a continuum that goes on. So there's nothing wrong with that, and I'm really glad that that made it to the list, because that is an industry we should look at. So I think you did a great job, Jeff, and I'm really pleased the council took the direction. But I'm just hoping we're all going to be in agreement on this, and that we don't nix something that we desperately need at the last minute. So. Uh, and I had one question, the real question, as Danny said, now I'm going to ask my question. That was my preamble. Did we get proposals in for the information package? Uh, we, received, we received two proposals. I had to reject one. Yeah. One came in uh, the day after the deadline, and our procurement policy says when, when a late proposal is received, it's to be returned unopened, and that's that's what we did. So the one received, so what's the next step? Are we proceeding with that project, or is that kind of on hold for budget, or are we moving in that general direction? I'm, I keep using the term TikTok. Yeah, and, and I guess that, can we, I'd like to talk about that in camera. Okay, no yeah, problem, thank you. Just because we're talking Good. about a Because I'm bringing this, I'm kind of, okay, and I'm gonna bring this around, because we can talk about this out of camera. Um, you're, you started with NSBI and what they're doing. Yep. Is there a way that we can tag into what they're doing? Because if they, it sounds like what you're telling us in that initial bit is similar to what we're looking for. They're actually building up the inventory, building up what our resources are, building up what we have to offer. Will that template satisfy what we're going to be doing? Well, they, they are creating the template with, with McSweeney. They've hired McSweeney to, to help provide the tools that they can then provide free of charge to the RENs, to communities, to use, to feed the data back to them, to help them be successful in, in getting nibbles to mm. bring to communities. So yes, very much they're looking to work hand in glove with us, with, with the RENs and with the communities to, to, to get the data in a, for, in a standardized format. And then they're absolutely interested in working with us because at the end of the day, if we are successful at attracting a business, to Yarmouth from from outside, they have a hand. They're going to have a hand in that, and they're going to they're going to obviously they're successful if we're successful and, and vice versa. So uh, it is very much they're looking for uh, stronger, uh, closer relationships with the munici with municipalities on investment attraction. Perfect. Thank you. CAO, you were going to you were going to say something, but you may have 
Yeah, I guess the 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 one thing I would say is is um, no. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the comment until we're in camera. To, Thank you. Because it relates to to the procurement process. Good. Councillor Dawes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm, uh, I think we're all pleased that we're finally moving in the direction um, that we're discussing today. We've been hoping for this for a long time, but finally, I think, Jeff, you've been putting, putting the, uh, our blocks in, in order. I'm trying to. Finally, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and if a motion is required to go forward on this, then I will make that motion. No we need to not, not yet. Not yet? No. I wouldn't say yet. So, so uh, just on the process, that was the other comment I was going to make is, is so, so all of this is to say we need to know because, okay, to go back to what our normal process with the budget has been is that we, we get the directors and managers to submit estimates, we put them all together, we bring it to council, and we then we start whittling. This time, and I think this is the better process, if we, we've come to council and we've, we've put together goals together. You guys have told us, have told us what your goals are, what you want to achieve. And so then the question is how? And this is the how, this is the how discussion. And there's about a half a million dollars worth of uh, resources need to do, to do all of that. So that half million dollars will get plugged in with all the estimates that we have from the directors and, and managers. Not as an afterthought, mm -hmm. but the first time you see those numbers, your priorities are in there. So then we're gonna, I will tell you, it's probably no surprise, we are gonna have to do some whittling. But we're not going to start the whittling process and then say, oh, and by the way, what did you guys want to do? We're, your, your things are going to be in there. And so it may not be that we end up at the end of the day with a half million dollars on these things. But if these are your priorities, then, I, then I'm wondering why, we're, why would we be cutting them in, in lieu of other things? Now, we do have some legislated responsibilities and we do you know, tax and transfer money to the province and so on. Obviously, we don't have any flexibility on that. But we do have areas of the budget where we do have flexibility. And I'm going to suggest to you that, that in order to, to make the bottom line work, your priorities are, are very important. Your council, for crying out loud, right? So these things are important. These are the things you want to do. Then we need to look at the bigger picture. And then, and then find find a way to make the budget work. Good. Councilman. Thank you, Your Worship. But I agree with Councilor Langell. I, it's, this is a process that's driven by council. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to face the electorate every four years. Um, if some of us decide that we want to run again, we all decided we ran for council because we wanted to make a difference. And to make a difference, I think Jeff and Jerry and whoever else was involved came up with this is probably the best thing I've seen at a council table in. Uh, my nine years that I've been around the table. And I think um, if we want to do our due diligence, um, we need a, and you can call it a promotion person, a communications officer, you can call it anything that you want, but your worship, you need help. You're, you, you're run ragged. And, and I don't think it's your responsibility. You're the face of the town. When somebody comes in, you greet them. Um, but what we are is we're a resource. We have to put that person in touch with the right person. And that's basically, when I was a mayor, all the calls that came to me were basically, not much had to do with being the responsibility of mayor, but they were more of direction finding, putting the person in contact with the right person. When somebody comes in, they want to open a business, they want to move here, uh, they want to relocate here, we have to put them in touch with the right person. Councillor Langell stated about a person that's moving here from out west. Well, myself, Councillor, McIsaac and Councillor Langell and your self worship, your worship have been in contact with a person um, that's moved here, retired, and his wife or girlfriend wants to open a business here in Yarmouth. It's going to be a one or two or three person operation, but this person has disposable income. He wants to start a business, could, could be anywhere from fifty to hundred thousand dollars. That's going to employ one to three people. What's wrong with that? But we need a points person to come in. We have to show them what our asset allocation is. And like Jeff said, or I said earlier, we have to be territorial. I'm concerned about the town of Yarmouth. I'm concerned about our tax rate. I'm concerned about what monies we bring in and what monies we expend. And I don't think um, for the bang for the buck, for $60,000 or whatever that points person is going to be, I think that's money well spent. And that's money that yourself, your worship, and others around the table, Jeff, Jerry, 
I mean, you know, when those things come in, it goes to Jeff, it goes to Jerry, it goes to other department heads, they're taking time away from preparing budgets. I know Jeff every day and Jerry every day that any contract, any invoice comes in, they're always looking ways to save money. And the more they have time to do that and the more we have a professional in place to do the other things, we're going to be better off. Okay. So let, let me, when, when you, Jeff, frame it like this, this is what we need. There's no, there's no doubt. I can't direct everybody. I can't be, I, I think when I, when I was running, I said, we need a navigator. We need somebody. But I'll say this very clearly as well. When, when we came to the table last year, and I wish people would just let it go, but that won't happen, and, and we're looking for a communications officer, that just rang of, of somebody doing up, doing up press releases and things like that, and that's what I was getting from that, and I can do that, and I can do it very well. And I think in the past year, year and a half, I think we've gotten a, a lot of coverage, a lot of really good eyes on Yarmouth, because I've been able to do that. But you're absolutely right. I can't, I can't take those medical marijuana companies and, and all the other ones and direct people. I just don't have the time. So I can, I'm not afraid to say, I'm not, uh, I'm not opposed at all, but my title, I guess, would be community, more like the community development officer or or I don't know how you do you have a I just don't want it to call it the wrong thing and and have people thinking the wrong thing we is that making sense yeah. we need somebody we need a navigator we need somebody I get it all the time too I want to open a business who do I talk to and people don't have a level clue what to do and and follow-ups and and stuff like that and go ahead CAO and then uh, you'll you'll be on deputy mayor yeah, Go ahead. We, we, we can get um, a little caught up in, in, in the title, but I think in terms of connecting this person to the appropriate colleagues, to the appropriate um, resources, yeah. something like a community economic development officer, yeah. and then in the job description, it's everything from investment readiness right through to investment traction, to navigation, okay. to business retention, expansion, yeah. it's, and promoting. It's, it's yeah. all of that. All right under the title of, of community community economic development. Okay. The community part is important to that. It is. It, it's very important because that signals it's, it's an mm -hmm. asset-based approach. It's, it's yep. working with the community. And it is, at the end of the day, this strategy is around increasing the, the tax base, mm -hmm. increasing our economic viability. Mm -hmm. So it is an economic job, whether that's done through attracting seniors mm -hmm. or attracting businesses yep. or any other demographic or... or yep. All of it. Uh, tax base yeah. for us, that's, that's all okay. part of it, so. Um, so that's my, that's my opinion anyway. I, I completely agree we need it, we just don't need that other element that I thought we were going towards last year. Deputy, Deputy, you're on. Th uh, thank you. Jeff, I was uh, impressed, even though I was a little bit late, I was impressed with your the, that last half of the presentation. The one item, the one comment that I that I think is that you made that was very important to me uh, personally, not just as a council but as a citizen, is that um, you know we should be reaching out into our business community and responding obviously to residential uh, suggestions and comments, <clears throat> so that we know what they're thinking and they have an opportunity to uh, to chat with us on an informal, perhaps formal basis sometimes and. Uh, so um, just that's what I got out of the second half of the presentation. I was very impressed. Um, to comment uh, further on, on uh, what everyone around the table seems to be agreeing to, or, or um, what about our planning department, Jeff? Uh, and how does that, how do you think that we fit into that uh, picture, how this, this uh, person that we're considering hiring could fit? Like we have, we've had a planning department that I've been involved with as a volunteer for a long time, <clears throat> and uh, it's been the same for a long time. Yeah. I wonder how that might change in light of what you have presented this morning. Yeah. I would, um, you know, my, my thought around that, just, and, and I haven't given it a huge amount of thought, but I think it, 
my automatic first thought is that, that this position is co-located with our development office because our development office should be about you know, implementing what, what council wish, how council wishes to see the, the, uh, the community develop. The municipal planning strategy should be about what is our strategy for development? And so your person who's out there trying to attract business and trying to, to uh, increase the tax base, same mission, really. As, as, your, as your planning and, and development office. And so co-located, working hand in glove, so they're talking to a business uh, possibility. Well, the better the relationship and the connection and the communication between that person and our development officer and our planner, I think the better off we'll be. A quick follow-up okay. question. Um, is that position that we're contemplating big enough for two municipal units, or is it is it just for the just for our town? My um, my initial suggestion would be because we because it's new and we don't know how onerous it is, and I think there's there's a in, in my opinion there's there's some there's very there's a lot of importance and a certain degree of urgency. I would suggest that we would we would move forward as the town down the road. You know, one, you know, we might look at this and say, you know what, there's capacity there to, to do more for, with, in partnership with, with our neighboring units. But at this point, I think that uh, uh, because we don't know exactly how burdensome it will be, how much of a workload it will be, and frankly, the business retention and expansion piece of it, um, can I talk about that for just a moment? Mm -hmm. The business retention expansion piece, I uh, heard last night from, from Karen Churchill with Register, they went around and they, they counted the businesses in the town of Yarmouth, and it was almost 500 businesses. That's, that's only a, what they could see. That's what they could see, that's yeah. what, they had signs out, right? There's 500 businesses that, that we should be, we should have a relationship with of some degree. That's 500 contacts to make, 500 cups of coffee to have, to have that, that discussion. Now, ACOA used to do business retention and expansion as, as was prescribed, I think, by the province or, or federal government, I'm not sure, but it was, a, it was this long interview. It took hours. It was an interview, checking out, answering questions. The, the more, the more up-to-date way of doing business and retention and expansion, frankly, is to go in and talk to the business owner and, and, and have some topics that you want to talk about. You want to talk about, you know, succession planning or expansion or, you know, what are, what are the issues facing your, you in the next five, you know, have just a, a conversation. Over a cup of coffee can be done individually. Probably best done individually when you, you know, you want to get some some uh, candor, uh, and then you, you walk away and, you, and you've started a relationship. You have contact information and you start sharing information. Like I talked to Jim McLeod, and Jim's interested in, uh, you know, uh, say expansion opportunities into medical marijuana or whatever. So when I get information, I'm sharing it with Jim. So now we're, we're talking about something that's of, of importance to you, relevance to you, and, and if I see an opportunity, I'm going to bring you in and hopefully result in your business growing. That's good. That's good. Thanks. Councillor Landro. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm sorry I had to step out. It was more of a senior moment. I had to use the washroom. But I, I guess I missed your comments that uh, with regard to the role of this person maybe not involved in, in communications. Um, not wholly. Not uh, to me, then don't do it. Uh, you can't possibly, in my opinion, hire a development officer, or somebody to promote your town, if they can't talk to anyone. I mean, that's ludicrous. I mean, uh, uh, it, it ain't gonna work. And I mean, I, I'm sorry, you, you need that person to be your marketer, and, and communications does not mean that that person is the, f and we tried, went through this exercise last year, that person is not the face of the community, that person is behind the scene. I'll give you an example. Um, we had yesterday Novastar here. They did the terminal deal. 
ideally a communications officer would have been in their glory yesterday. They would have had the press releases done, they would have had, which we did, everything was done. That was done by our existing staff. But, and they did a great job. But the media person, the communications officer, is a person who writes the speech. He's the, he, she is the person that does the release. They're not quoted anywhere. They're not in front of any cameras. They work behind the scenes. I mean, I did public relations for the armed forces for, I bet you, close to 11 years, and I don't think I was in front of a camera once. My job was to put my general in front of the camera. Yeah, I'm making up for now. That's why I'm in front of the camera. But I mean, but that's the reality. And I, so I think it's a mistake there. And to Deputy Mayor, I, I'm going to be very frank and blunt. It's broke. It's broke. And what I mean it's broke is the idea of the model we've been following. We've got the same people on the same boards and agencies that I've been on for nine bloody years. And look at where we're at. So there's something wrong here, folks. I mean, there are some people that have been on the same boards and agencies for 25 years. Now, okay, we've got such young, and, and I'll tell you what's happening. We've got a lot of young business people coming into this community who feel intimidated by the group that's there now or by individuals there. It's almost, they see it as a closed shop, and that is so wrong. We want to encourage these new entrepreneurs, these new business people to get involved and to give us their ideas. And I mean, I, I know I've um, been around this table as Phil has for nine years and, and Danny, you go to meetings with the same people. It is exactly the same people. And there are people out there that are different, that need that, we need that input. Um, to me, I think a communications, well, I'm sorry, the development officer, a community development officer is wonderful. And that person should be focused on the town. That person should be working on what this town is all about because this is a regional hub, folks. You know, to, to expect your community development officer to, to, to try to sell Port Maitland and Yarmouth Waterfront are like two different things. I mean, Port Maitland's a beautiful community with beaches and tourism potential. We don't have that luxury in our harbor. It's a working waterfront, and it, it splits their energy. We need that focus. Yes, maybe down the road, we might be able to focus and work with our partners in it. But Jeff, I agree with you, CAO. Your, the, the staff recommendation is good. Start small, focus your energy, focus your attention, because I've seen too much in the past where we've, we're like shotguns hoping that something will stick. When in reality, we need to focus on our own little community and what we're doing here and how we can get it going. And there's so much needs to be done. And I agree with you. Tomorrow was a good day to start. I wish we could, because we really should have done this five, six years ago. So that's my 10 cents worth. Okay, so, so I'll add my two cents to your 10 cents. I, I, don't know, I don't know if you misheard me or, you, or what happened there. I have, I, I, don't, I don't rightfully care about the camera. I don't care about any of that stuff. What I cared about last year was that I genuinely thought we were spending 60 plus dollars on a communications officer when if we need to do press releases, we can farm that out at a maximum of $200 a piece. So, so why, why do that? It was as simple as that. Today, if we can move on, we're on a different page. We're talking about community development. We're talking about you know, navigation, all those things. I think we're more on the same page now, but we need to just leave that. Whatever happened last year happened last year and chalk it up to new people or whatever it is, but it's what's done is done, um, and we just need to move on. It's, it's, it's tiring at every, every meeting. So anyway, um, and part of that person could be to, because it's not that often, to write press releases if they're up on that or we farm it out because I did check into that this week, and it's relatively inexpensive and it is a good thing to do, but not a full-time person. But that's not what we're talking about. Councillor Mooney? Well, I semi-disagree with you, Your Worship, but I think that was explained uh, See, that's not very... No, I, think, I thought it was explained well last year, and it was a, a catch-all person. Yeah. It wasn't communications person, and we might have had the wrong label on it, but um, I think everybody around the table agrees this year that this person should be in place. Now, I'm not going to be satisfied until we pass a budget and this person is in place. You got burnt once, I don't want to be burnt again. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but with the other one, you can shake your head, Councillor Dodds, if you want, but that's the truth. 
Um, They'll make assumptions. Do not make assumptions, sir. Well, I'm telling you. Don't know my temperature. You don't know what, you, you don't know what, what flu I have. I mean, not shaking my Well, I'm next year, and I might be getting it next, and that's all right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. But um, they have this person already in the municipality of Argyle. It's Brenda. And they have this person. And, and Claire, and they have this person in the municipality of Yarmouth, and one of Councillor Langell's biggest bugaboos sitting around this table, and I've heard it for five years, is we are the regional hub. We have our hospital here, which is a regional <coughs> hospital. We have our educational facilities here in the town of Yarmouth. We have our financial institutions here in the town of Yarmouth. But if we shared a person with the municipality or with Argyle, I'm scared that we're going to be fractioned the shotgun approach, these businesses will be sitting on the outskirts of Yarmouth, and what they always say, well, you guys get the benefit. People come in, they shop in your stores, they do the other thing. We don't get the benefit. We provide the services, but we don't get the tax revenue. So I think we need a dedicated person here in the town of Yarmouth. Uh, I'm very territorial when it comes to that. I know we have to work on a regional approach, and as you stated many times, and I know this, we have over 19 or 20 different agencies that we share services with. But guess what? Sometimes you have to take care of yourself. And I'm sorry, Your Worship, if I was, if I was out of line or Councillor Dawes about my comments, but I feel strongly that this person should be in place, and I felt strongly last year. I feel more strongly this year, especially with the presentation that our CAO has done. I know Jeff has done a lot of work on this, along with Mr. Varen. So um, I think this is going to be work out well. Um, it's like uh, the Community in Blooms <coughs> exercise. We have gardening workshops. You don't see full results your first week, but guess what? This is not, we're not in a sprint. We're in a long haul. We're in a marathon here. We're going to have some, we had some great news with the announcement on the ferry terminal, the new boat, and I think we have other things to follow. And Councillor Dodds is going to be bringing up some things, I think, with the airport that are going to be very important. So we're in a marathon, and we're starting today, Your Worship. So guess what? If it happened last year, let's don't ha let it happen again this year. Thank you. Thank you. Is it more of the? Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a just a sidebar on that too. I mean, the, the it, and I think this. I know I brought it up last year when we get into this discussion. The contracting out is the way to go in many cases because contracting out, you know, you in public <coughs> relations nowadays the way the model is is you give somebody a base retainer and then you with that retainer, that person is going to give you so much product. You have performance, you have, you have everything gauged, everything in place. Um, down the road, I could see this position the CAO is making reference to even going into a position where they would be contracting some of that out. I mean, to me, it would be the, the most efficient. We're actually doing it now with the, the whole RFP that we put out to put together the, the industry booklet, the information kit. Um, the nice part about an industry contracting out, and I know your worship, you know this yourself because you're in private practice. Um, it's very common now because you're not stuck with, a, with an employee that doesn't perform. It's a lot easier to cancel a contract at the end of one year than to try to fire somebody after two or three because they're not doing their job. And I think we've seen that. In a type of role that we're doing here, given the, the expertise that we have in this community, it's a sweet contract for somebody. Give them a guarantee of so many thousand a year, plus here's what our expectation is. The CAO and his staff would be able to say, yep, he did his job. Yep, he did his performance. Yes, we got the results we wanted, and it's measurable. And if you have measurable, accounted results, life is good. So I'm, I'm all for it. I, I agree with Councillor Mooney. Councillor Dawes? Well, I ahead. will just jump on the bandwagon. I think it's marvelous, absolutely. Um, obviously, the job description has evolved since a year or so ago. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm looking forward, as I'm sure my colleagues will as well, look forward to being able to uh, when someone, uh, as I did uh, last month when I was in Toronto, I spoke with two CAOs of two different companies. One has been trying for quite some time to come back into or start their business here, and they have run into red tape upon red tape, but it is starting to loosen up, so things are starting to evolve. Um, another CAO in Toronto has been looking um, at Yarmouth. Um, they have been paying very, very close attention to what has been going on in Yarmouth. Their very first question was about the airport. And uh, it would be very, very nice. I think we're all looking forward to the time, to the day when we can uh, either uh, direct 
these inquiries to a particular person or have a brochure in hand to give to them. And it looks like we're on the way. Super, what do you need from us now, CAO? Um, I, just so we're all on the same, because last year happened, but whatever. It, it, are there any concerns? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Are there any concerns? Because we would, we would get a look at the job description or whatever before anyway, right? Or we would answer want, me. If you want. Well, I mean, it, we just want to make sure, all of us want to make sure, but, but I think what you're saying is exactly what we're after. You good, Councillor Dennis, you haven't said a word. Did you want to, any? Yes, I'm good with it. Uh, I feel the same way as being a business person that people want to come to the community and they never have the answers and it's always been a problem with red tape and everything starting a business. So I, th I congratulate um, our CAO and Jerry for, yeah. yes, thank I, you. I think we're, I think everybody's had, had a say in this one. I can't hear anybody saying no. So, Councillor Langell, on the same thing? Or? Yeah, oh, it is. Uh, the only thing I would say is if we proceed with this, we need to go external for a hiring agency. Like, to me, I'd like to see us do like we do with the, what we did with the fire chief. You know, get a professional. Let's not, um, I, I'll be very honest, and I mean, like you commented last night, Mayor Moody, I say what I darn well feel. Well, yeah. I, I was shocked, for example, when Yazda made their selections for their, or they haven't made it, did their interviews, but it was an internal committee. That, that is such a critical, important job that should have been, uh, again, a, a consultant coming in externally and doing the process, because as you know, with, our, with one of our hirings, it went extremely <laughs> well. It's a good process, and I, I really encourage that we should look at that. Let's not, a bunch of us sit around a room and interview a pile of people. Let's get somebody qualified as a company that would actually come in with short lists and recommendations based on, on experience. And let, let, that, let that happen. I'm, I don't know how Jeff feels about that, but that's something I think we should be looking at. We need the best person we can get. Thank you. CAO and then uh, Danny. Yeah, we've used, um, we've used external consultants on a number of occasions uh, to fill key positions and uh, you know that uh, that actually is is a is a big help yeah. uh, if council is supportive of that approach because that gives us the ability to tap into the experience and, and the resources of an external agency, not only in the recruitment side of it, um, but also also in the development of the job description as you've as you've identified, uh, and frankly uh, they have different they have different abilities in terms of recruitment that that we just simply don't have. Uh, as an example, if they might, they might uh, reach out, and I get this on a regular basis, they, they reach out to municipal staff. Now, I'm not going to reach out to municipal staff in other municipalities mm -hmm. as the CAO of the town of Yarmouth or anybody else on our staff, but if a third-party recruiter is, is doing that, then, then it, will be brought to, it might be brought to the attention of somebody who's already working in municipal government, uh, doing a good job, and looking for a change. So. Um, you know, that is one of the advantages. Thank there, you. there are many. Good. Councillor McIsaac. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this is a very important commitment. I've been on board since, you know, for quite a few years. This, this is not the first time we've had this discussion. And uh, it's, it goes way back. I've always felt that we needed a professional person. Now, we've had a lot of, a lot of real capable and smart people, but there's a difference between prof professional and good people and smart people. Professional people are people that know what, the, what the, their trade, and their trade is what we're seeking here is to, to do things for the town of Yarmouth. This, this is what's got to be made, made clear. It's not, it's not for I don't believe we should be looking for, for our sisters, municipal units, no. to come on board with us and fund this. This should be a Yarmouth initiative and Yarmouth only, Yarmouth town, to do this. We're looking to bring industry, we're looking to bring whatever we can in to the town and, and, and confined in our area for us. Other units have them working for, for them. 
but the key word, and I keep saying it, is professional. We've had lots of good, good people that work for the town of Yarmouth and work for, for uh, joint people for the municipality and the town. And we had some that wasn't so great. And Jeff, you know, uh, I'm not going to go into detail because that's, that's uh, not what I'm going to do. So anyway, <laughs> I just hope that when we do this, we get the right person and we take all the precautions to make sure that this person knows exactly what his job or her job will be. And uh, I look forward to working with whoever gets this position. And far as farming this out to uh, a third party, that's not a bad idea if it gets it out there for the right person to come in. But I have every confidence in our human resources staff that uh, can, can do this. But if we want, if we want a, bigger, a bigger spread of uh, visibility out there for a person to apply for this, he or she, it's a great idea that Council Angel is, uh, is adding to this, and I, I have no problem with doing that. And that's all I had to say, Your Worship. Thank you. CAO and then, then Phil. No, I'm good. You're good? Uh, and yep, go ahead. I share Councilor McIsaac. We've got a great HR department, and I know if you go to an outside agency, they'll be bringing the candidates in, and, and Jeff and Jerry and, and Jody have a role in that yeah. interview process. So they'll do the people, bring them in, and then they do the process. But Jeff, just... Uh, and people are going to ask a question. I know we're on TV and there's a few people watching right now. Just, I, I want to know the financial situation uh, with our last development officer. I know that the town of Yarmouth and the municipality of Yarmouth started off with, uh, with a development officer, the last one, and it was taken kind of morphed into a provincial agency. So I just right. want to want maybe people to know it's more for information than anything else about the how. Uh, that individual was paid and through what agency? It wasn't the town in, at the end, right? No, no, sorry. Middle? No, it wasn't. Uh, the, um, it, it started out initially as a 50-50 arrangement with the municipality of Yarmouth. And uh, very quickly, like I think the start date for that position was like January 2nd, uh, 2011. And by, by April, the person had transitioned to a regional job, which was funded by ACOA and at the Provincial Department of Economic Development. So it went from being funded locally to being funded by the province and the feds in a regional project. And so, yeah, once the job, once the incumbent in, the, in that position moved to the regional, he was no longer under the direction of, of the town. Uh, he was housed in the town, but he was not a town employee as, as being directed by the CAO. He was directed by a board of directors that, that had a regional um, representation. So actually, when you think about it, we haven't had a true development person no. in place solely directed from the town of the area, basically, for the old squad today? Uh, yeah, and even then it wasn't solely for the town of Yarmouth, right? The Industrial Commission or Swasta were, were, uh, were regional as well. Different, different scope, certainly. One well, of them county, one of them regional. Yeah, the people of Shelburne County. So they yeah, have right. I do, I, I do want to say this because I think it's important to say because we, we don't want to sound like, we're, like we don't want to work regionally. That isn't what this is about. This is about we need, you know, uh, Argyle has a great community economic development officer. Claire does as well, but they aren't going to be in mowing our backyard. They're 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 working for themselves and they're working for the region. And you know, Brenda Legrandeur, who we've spoken about, and I'll use her name in in Argyle, she was at the same uh, workshop I was at my table. And one of the one of the most interesting and um, I think reassuring things that I heard that whole time is when, when they put us in, in, in a group at our table to do an exercise to look at a particular business and talk about the fit in our community in terms of our assets and that, Brenda's view of that exercise was not the District of Argyle. Brenda's view was Yarmouth. Yeah. You know, Brenda, Brenda looked at what we have, you know, which, which I thought was just, it, was, it wasn't even, it, there was no hesitation. It was like, well, we have an airport and we have a, you know, we have the the water and sewer services, right? Yeah, well, we know where the water and sewer services are. So the fact is, is though, even though she's working for the District of Argyle, 
she has a, a regional view of, of things, and I think our person would have to would have to take that same approach. Is, is yes, we're working, we're, we're 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 cultivating what's in the town, but we're not competing with those other units. Yeah, we're exactly. working together. Yeah, and if, and if you're in the city of Toronto and you're in other, any other municipal unit, uh, being 12 miles away or 13 miles away with the regional hospital and the facilities that we have, that would be part of their asset group, right? Yep. So that's a selling Absolutely. point. Absolutely. Good. Okay. So where are we next? Okay. So as far as this goes, uh, we will at our next meeting, we'll bring you forward the estimates, the actual numbers, and we'll start to go through those. Excellent. And we'll show you what the bottom line looks like. I can give you a bit of a, bit of a uh, uh, an indicator now. It's less than a million dollar problem, but it's close that we're going to be asking to, to help us sort out, okay? Uh, it's I not a problem, it's an investment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem if it's in red, yeah, exactly. okay? <laughs> show on, uh, Danny. About, about close Your phone's to, banned from now on. Close to, close to yeah. Close to a million dollar uh, challenge we have to sort out, okay. and and but this time going into it, we we know what your I priorities see. are. We know what's important to council, and that yeah. will help us. It's one filter yeah. through which we have to look at, at our yeah. decisions. So, for today, uh, if we'd like to stop at this point and move in camera, mm -hmm. I would like if we have time for Jerry to to talk about the tax agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, Thing and uh, we did have one other aspect of this that I wanted to talk about in camera. All right. We if we have time. Well, we've got a couple more on here too. We've got the oh, mayor's we'll fund or there. something. How? How? Just I just want to ask how long is the the rest of this going to take? Like the the mayor's fund in the airport. Is it a big, long discussion? The or? airport's very quick. Okay. If I can okay, speak to let's that. Okay, let's, all right. Uh, the airport, if, if I may, Councillor? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the airport board uh, has representatives from, from each municipality on the board. It's a fairly small board. Mm -hmm. um, the, the chairman has asked, as Argyle, Argyle has recognized the difficulty sometimes of, of having the members the members present mm -hmm. at, at meetings, they have, they have now gone ahead and appointed an alternate council member mm -hmm. and the chairman has asked that that we do the same so that it makes it easier for the uh, for the airport board to ensure having a quorum it only takes a couple basically a couple people missing and, and your quorum is at risk so if we could appoint an alternate uh, member to the airport board um, that's for your for your consideration all right you want to do that yes. councillor okay I, I nominate councillor Dawes as our alternate Thank you. That's a motion. Second. Second by Deputy Mayor. Any discussion? Question. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Good. Thank you. Mayor's fund. We want to do that now, and then that's done. We can take our time. There's, there's, there's two parts of this also. Uh, this will be for Jeff. Jeff, the mayor's fund. We, uh, we put that together. I think a few years ago. Uh, I think it's time to revisit this and perhaps put it back in to where it belongs so everybody can, all the rest of the counselors can access, access this. I don't think, at, at, look at it, looking at it, 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 it should be not called the Mayor's Fund. It, it, we, we made it the Mayor's Fund a few years ago for, I don't know why, but we did, just so. Uh, when people come that were late looking for funding for different uh, happenings that were going on in the town of Yarmouth that we created this fund. I think this, this should go back into the grants to organizations. And I put that out there to my colleagues and say, let's put it out there. So I don't think the mayor should have her own fund and the rest of the councillors don't have a fund to deal with. It just, just doesn't fit right with me. and it, Perhaps never did. Uh, I did vote for it way back then, but to call it a mayor's fund, I don't really think that as an elected official we should have a mayor's fund. That's just my thought, and I look for some comments around the table. If anybody's got any suggestions or questions. Well, I don't think, uh, I don't expect much out of Councillor Mooney on this one, considering he was the mayor before with this one, so I'll. <laughs> 
might put him on the spot on it a bit. Uh, I, I had a. Well, he never asked. Uh, me. Uh, thank you. you. Thank you for bringing it up. I, I'm I slipped my mind. Uh, what is the mayor's? How, how much is the mayor's fund right now? What What do we have with that? Okay. Um, I can give you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, because yeah. I don't. Even... You can't control me on this mic. Okay. Okay. I can't control okay. it now. <laughs> Go ahead. The, uh, please. So the mayor's fund was brought in in 2007 uh, when Charles Crosby was the mayor. And the reason it was brought in is that we had, uh, throughout the year, a number of small requests coming to council, and they would be things like, uh, there's going to be a, uh, um, I'll use an example, comes to mind, a bridge tournament, and they want us to buy a $200 ad in the program. Well, you know, that, that really is a political decision. Let's call it what it is. It's a sponsorship. It's not, it's not you know, a, a, an administrative decision is not going to occur that's going to say, yes, that's obviously great value for money for the town and we're going to do that. So these would come on the council agenda. So council of the day decided that, that we should create a small fund. At, it was $5,000 then and it's been $5,000 ever since uh, for the mayor to be able to respond to those sorts of requests. Those, those very small, um, unforeseeable in some cases, kind of sponsorshipy kind of things, to just deal with them rather than have them come back to a council agenda and you know and, and outside of the grants process so that's that was what led to it now i i said this to councillor mcisaac before is that we have a habit sometimes of uh when when an idea like that comes up we say okay well that's a good idea i move i second and so so it's established the problem with that is it's just a motion but it lives on for eternity. Any decision that you're making that lives on past that one decision point, it's one thing to say I'm going to give somebody $500 or grant somebody $500. It's a decision. It's one time. It's done. But when you say you're going to create a fund and it's going to be continuing, that really is a policy issue. Mm -hmm. And so when you do that, what we ought to be doing is direct staff to create a policy or, and give staff some direction how you want that to look. And then we bring back a policy and then, then there's rules around it. Right? And, and there's no questions. What happened back in 2007 when that was established, it was done by motion. Right? So, so there are no written rules around it. There's just the history that we know around how it came to be. And so, uh, Charles, I don't think Charles used it much. It was, uh, when, when I, I, I used it pretty good. Phil, Phil used it pretty good. Um, and, and Pam has it now. And so, uh, that's, that was the, the origins of it and what it was intended for. And that's how, money, how much money has been there in the budget ever since. You don't, well, ahead, uh, yeah. I think I got yeah. Councillor McIsaac yeah. first and then yeah. Councillor Mooney. Go ahead. So a continuity of this $5,000. Uh, I've never seen anything <laughs> how the money spent. There's no direction how the money can be spent uh, th that I know of. I haven't seen anything. I mean, the, you know, with all due respect to the mayor, she could rent the Mariner Center. She could. Uh, perhaps rent the Grand Hotel. I mean, I don't know. I, I have no idea. That's why I think it's key. It's key, and it is a political thing. This is a political thing. It's like if you want anything, you have to come see the mayor to get any extra grants or any extra money. That's that's the way that I'm looking at it. Okay, so that's the go from the table. Nobody ever calls me. Go ahead, Phil. Well, and the only thing I have to add is, uh, and. You might, you might argue about the amount, but uh, there's been opportunities where, and Tina knows this probably better than anybody, where a hockey team or a baseball team's won a provincial or a regional championship and they're going to a provincial tournament representing Yarmouth as either the Yarmouth Gateways or the Clippers or whatever, or the Yarmouth Mariners if it's the hockey. And they say, Phil, we want an opportunity to go to, uh, I think one of them was, uh, Albert Moore's team won an opportunity to go to uh, another, I think Amherst, I think, to play provincial baseball championships. And they're looking for one, like Jeff said, like a sponsorship of $200. Um, they're ambassadors for Yarmouth. They're going away. Uh, I never used the fund to double dip anybody. So if somebody came to, at council level and then came to the mayor afterwards to get extra money, I don't think that's not the purpose of the fund. But I think one of the other ones was Yarmouth was hosting a provincial championship, so we had people coming in. And I think that was Albert Moore. I think that was on one of the hockey ones that they won. People were coming in, so, you know, it's in between in between sponsorships. You might be able to argue about the amount, but I don't think the, I don't think I ever... I'm not, 
I, I'm not really arguing about the amount. I'm not arguing about anybody being sponsored or not sponsored. I'm just arguing the, the, the mayor's fund. That's, what, that's, that's my concern. And, and, and what, what I, I, I don't want to delete the $5,000. That's not, that's not my intent. My intent to do is just to bring it back where it originally came from and leave it there and let's deal with, with people's funding issues when they come up. We'll always have them and it's better to have more continuity around the table when somebody comes to ask for funding at a short notice or any, any kind of notice, we can deal with it as a council, not just one person. That was my thought. Uh, instead of having a name on it and just the mayor's fund only, I think that that's uh, politically, uh, I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm also looking at it that, that it should be put back where it originally came from and that way everybody would have a kick at the can, the Knights of Columbus, uh, the uh, communities in bloom or whatever organizations that different people have that's out there they always come looking for funding and instead of going for the <clears throat> excuse me the mayor's funding it would be just in that funding period let's not give it a name it's not taking anything from anybody it's putting it back where it originally came from and not giving it a, a funding name it's 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 grants to organizations that's all it is well, it's, it's, <coughs> it's more than that it's yeah it's a little more than that but the other thing about it is is you know the council process if we decide something today at the committee of the whole we can't do anything until the council meeting no so, that's that so that's not true that's that's not really true because we can go into another meeting special meeting and pass it right I there i mean we've go, done that plenty of times i don't think we're going to go the committee of the whole meeting and go into a special meeting to grant uh the arm well we've done it we, we, we've done it plenty of times Look back. <clears throat> I don't think we've done it plenty of times. I think you can count less than three fingers. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with you, but uh, I, I I'd say we, we have, and if we have, we've done it once. It's like I give to you. We got to give to everybody. So that that's my theory on it. <laughs> I mean point. I mean that's my theory yeah. on it. I, I, I'm I'm only bringing the issue out, and I'm only one person. If you if you if you're happy with <laughs> the way it's going, keep it the way it's going. I think I think maybe the how to solve this problem is is maybe look at the amount. Make it we'll policy. It. If it's, if it's going to be, let's have it policy or not policy. Maybe have it. Uh, we're publishing all our expenses for everybody. Do the same thing with the mayor's fund once a month or once every two months. I, I, don't, I don't care how you do it. There. I just got a problem with the word mayor funding, that's all. Um, yeah. Did okay. this exist for the last four or five years? It's existed 2007? since 2007. Yes. Yeah. And it's a problem now. No, it's, it's, it, no it's, it's always been a problem. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, never really gave it that much thought, now that we're on the topic. Um, I kind of agree, in a way. Um, you know, with all due respect to Councillor Mooney, um, here we have Councillor Mooney served as the mayor of the town. He administered the mayor's fund. He gave out the freebies with the mayor fund. He then runs for council. It gives him a political edge. I don't mind saying it. There's a political edge there. You know, I, it could be perceived. I don't know how the fund was spent or how it was or anything like that. Um, then on the other hand, I hear what the CAO is saying. You have the, you've got to balance that off as well. I agree that there should be accounting. I've never seen, I have no idea how the mayor's fund is used and I never even queried. I know if I had asked, CAO would have shared it with me. I never thought to even bother with it. Um, I, to me, it, it's, it's a sum of money that's there. To me, it's, it's coming from the people of Yarmouth. Uh, that's where the money is coming from. It's a language thing. I can see where Councillor McIsaac is coming from, the, the mayor's fund. Well, it's not the mayor's fund. It's the people's fund. It's from the whole town that we have. And maybe that's a name with the nomenclature we have to look at. I don't know. Um, to me, I'm curious what the CAO's <laughs> thought is. It, are we getting... <laughs> Or maybe the mayor herself. I mean, you or uh, uh, Mayor Mooney. You said you use it a lot, and and uh, CAO said that former Mayor Crosby didn't use it hardly at all. I don't know. Is there, uh, Mayor Moon? Are you using it, or uh, we're kind of kind of scratching in the dark here? Sorry. I think Mayor Crosby was the king in two thousand and seven. Yeah. Yeah, I may have been mistaken. It may have been two th earlier in 2008 because the yeah. election was October 2008. I don't think that. Uh, it was only like three months that he had yeah. <laughs> I mean, to me, there's ways you could look at. It. I mean, I can see where Councillor McKay's would come from. Maybe reduce the amount to a couple thousand or whatever if that makes people feel happier. I don't know. I got no, no problem that, with the money. You know, uh, I I agree with the transparency. I'm all about transparency, I, and I think we we, we should. I th and I don't, I've never had a problem getting information here in Town Hall. I mean, no one's told me I'm 
none of, me, none of your business. Uh, so it's been very good. So I mean, if any of us had a question on that, we I know could ask CAO or, or Mr. Barron, I know they'd share it with us. I've never bothered to be perfectly honest. So uh, to me, if, I don't know, I'm curious what Mayor Mood feels or the other councillors feel. I'm six of one, half a dozen of another. How do I feel? I feel like it's fine just the way it is, just the way it has been. As a matter of fact, the first person to tap into the mayor's fund was Councillor Mooney. And he just said, I've got, I have got—I don't know if it was something you were going to in, up the shore, and he said, it was a good cause. Can I have some money out of the mayor's fund? I said, yes. It's, it's a logistical thing. It's a name, but you know what? It, it's there. I certainly don't abuse it. I don't think I do. Jerry, you can t I really don't. I really don't. So it's... Right now, it's it's fine. Um, it's fine by me. Councillor Dawes. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I was just about to uh, uh, to click myself off because between uh, between the councillors, uh, Mooney and Langel, um, you've answered you've answered the questions that I had. Um, it sounds like it's more of a discretionary fund. It's a last minute. Yeah. Uh, anything else that uh, that you do have to sit down and plan, it comes to council. If anything comes up. Last minute, um, if we have any, uh, uh, as uh, what example did you give? Uh, if we have a sports sports event here, something comes up last minute, needs some money, um, chances are pretty slim that we're all going to get all seven of us together here to vote on it. Um, I find if it doesn't do work, I, mean. I don't. Um, I see no problem in it, and um, uh, like if it's worked since 2007 or 2008. Um, I, uh, if it's not broke, then there's no need to fix it. Um, I'm fine with it. And uh, as, uh, as to transparency, if we ever want to know what's been going in or out, uh, just as uh, Councillor Langell said, the information is there for us at any time. Thank you. Good. I trust the Now, the, the other one, if you like, it if, is there. We, can yeah. see it. we can see it. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. If, if you like that one, you're, you're like this one. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, the extra funding for the mayor, is it three, four hundred dollars? I don't, I don't know what that is for. I don't either. You're, when, you're, when did that come into play and, and why? You're, you're referring to the vehicle allowance. The, is it a vehicle what? allowance? A vehicle allowance. I, yeah. I, don't, I didn't hear you. Vehicle allowance? Vehicle allowance, okay. Right. So that came in, into effect, again, it was back in, uh, in the term of uh, the last term of Charles Crosby. Uh, and in fact, I had recommended that. Um, Charles uh, and, and every mayor since. Uh, though, that's a lot of them. That's a lot of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you, you do, you're at town hall on, on a daily basis and you're running around to events and, and meetings and whatnot. And uh, I had recommended a vehicle allowance, a, a monthly allowance for the mayor. Uh, and that sits at $400 and it's a taxable allowance. Uh, how it's, much? It's $400. But you take taxes out of it, right? Oh, yes, I was say, income taxes. Tax, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's taxable income. And so okay. the, the check probably ends up looking more like 320 not even that. Anyway, go ahead. So, so that is that is the origins of that, and and then it's it's one of these things that it was done by motion, not by policy. So there is no policy around it. So I treat it um, at much the same as, as I do with the directors and the CAO also receive a vehicle allowance. Um, you you receive a vehicle yes, allowance? I do. Yes, I do. Is there anybody else that receives a vehicle allowance? Uh, yes. And who would they be? Uh, the directors of the town receive a uh, vehicle allowance. Is that, is that a common practice in other municipal units? I don't know. I haven't asked. Well, that's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. Well, I, I can ask if you like. Um, this, this was in place when I started. In fact, it was part of when I started. Probably his, his uh, Mayor, Mayor Crosby's last year. Uh, Sorry? Uh, Mayor Crosby's last year? No, was, was no, no, no. It? Had, had it always been in place? Yes. Uh, it only came in place for the mayor it, uh, in Mayor Crosby's last term, and I, I, I could look it up, but I'm going to say 2006 or 2007. Um, and so uh, he was given a, a vehicle allowance at the same level as the director or, or the CAO. And as I say, that has remained in place. There is no policy around that. Again, like the like the uh, the mayor's fund, it was done by motion of council, as opposed to uh, a policy which which outlined uh, exactly what it was for. 
do you, in, in uh, your, your thoughts on this, I, I, I have different thoughts on this, uh, but, uh, and I, I will make them known, but do you think there should be a policy cre created along with the mayor's fund and this particular funding, extra funding that the mayor gets? And I don't know about your, you and your employees. I, I have no, probably have no control or anything over that. Yes. Uh, so do. do you think that there should be policy made up? We should have a policy. And that way, if it's part of policy, perhaps it can be dug in as policy, and here's the background about it, with instead of counselors like me, new or old, ask questions about this. Yeah. If you don't ask, you'll never know. Right, and so, and so what I, when, when we started talking here about the last item, the, the mayor's fund, I said initially, I explained that there are some things that are appropriate to do by resolution and some yeah. things that are appropriate to do by policy. Mm -hmm. Because this is a, an ongoing, it's not a one time, yeah. then it really should be done by policy. And an example, and, it, and right now we're in the process of reviewing our, uh, or, or reviewing a draft to bring forward a um, travel and expense uh, policy, and it probably should be incorporated within that policy. Yeah. But in, in, in all fairness, uh, I'll ask, this is just a question, you could answer it or don't answer it. Uh, the mayor goes to meetings around town, is that what it's for? It's, it's for, uh, yeah, and yourself. It's for, it's for local travel. Yeah. For, 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 for local traffic, so they get that. Now the councillors go to meetings around town and do different functions, but they don't get anything. Right. Does that seem, does that seem f fair to you? Or do we get that in our stipends? You get a stipend, you don't get anything additional for local travel. Yeah, okay. Does the mayor get that also? The mayor gets a stipend and gets a vehicle allowance. Okay. But that's extra? Yes. But that's, that's the point I was making. Yep. That, okay. That's what I'm making. I don't regret you're getting the money. I'm just making a point here that yep. if... And so, and so it is at council's discretion. Yeah. And if, if council is going to, uh, you know, and I'm not suggesting for a minute that it wouldn't be appropriate to consider some sort of local travel stipend for councillors. What I would say, my only comment on it is, if you're going to do it, let's, let's do it right this time and do it by policy, right? So, mm -hmm. so that it's clear what it is, what it's for, what it covers as opposed to by motion. Yeah, well, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that we should saddle the, tax per, the, the taxpayers with any more expense of extra money that anybody else gets. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that if there's, if there's things in place that's made by motions, then these things that are in place by motion should be part of a policy and procedure that really should sure. be. So I guess my question to the rest of my colleagues here, should we ought not look, be looking at a policy to put in place for these two items or not? Or is everybody happy just the way that, uh, the way the things are going? One elected official gets a extra stipend and the rest of the colleagues are not entitled to it. That's just my thought, that's all. But anyway, policy. We should have a policy around this if we're gonna do this. I mean, it's, it, it's, only, it's only appropriate, it's, it's doing our due diligence, I have that, and I think we should do it. That's all I'll say on it. Councillor Langell? Oh, all kinds of neat things discovering this morning. <laughs> this is good. Um, another good point. Um, yeah, I'm kind of wondering, the, the, I, I, again, the uh, allowances or whatever, I, I concur. I, uh, I think you need a policy, I mean, and to, uh, to act kind of loosey-goosey and just simply to, we're going to do this, is by motion. I think a policy is definitely needed. Um, for all three. I mean, the mayor's fund definitely should have parameters set around it. I mean, uh, if you've got a series of dollars there, I think just for, for transparency and for accountability um, through the taxpayers, to me, the, the idea was the CAO crafted it very well in the beginning. He said the intent of the fund was for a small request for two, three hundred dollars. There's no reason why it couldn't be designed so that no, no, uh, it cannot be for any more than two hundred or three hundred dollars. Anything more than three hundred goes to council, blah, blah, blah blah, it cannot be used for travel, it cannot be used for this, but that's fine, I mean, that, that's good parameters, that's good parameters, that's, a, that's what the policy's for. Um, 
Regarding the car travel, whatever it is called, allowance around town, um, councillors, uh, by virtue of the office, uh, get a, a portion of their uh, stipend tax-free for the running of their constituent offices, and it's considered as expenses. It, it's not a taxable item. It's there. We're entitled under the Revenue Canada to have a, a certain portion put in that direction. Uh, the mayor similarly has that same percentage in hers uh, that's there. And there definitely is going to be expenses uh, that, that come up as a result of that, and it's going to happen. Um, Again, I believe a policy should be put in place. Um, you know, um, okay, let's let's say uh, if you get a if you're getting a vehicle allowance, uh, and this is a question of the CAO because I saw it on the agenda earlier, but I see it's gone now. Uh, town credit cards. Now staff have those, I suspect. Like. Uh, I suspect they're like credit card. I see that. I know it's not on, but well, I'm just curious. Yeah. What, we, what I'm, here's my question. Okay. I mean, is it realistic that you could look at, I mean, you're getting a vehicle allowance, but also are you able to um, claim mileage or do you, uh, I, I'm, you see that, and I don't really want, expecting an answer here. I'm just, that's this? what the policy needs to say. Yeah. You know, if so, you're, if you're holding a, a hypothetically this, you can do this, this, and this. If the $300 is, to me, $300 is an absolute pittance when you start depreciating a vehicle. I mean, if there's nothing worse than driving a car from here to there, starting and stopping it, you know. So the mayor leaves town hall, she got to run like a bat out of Hades down to the waterfront, and then she got to get out of the car, got to run back to town hall, and then she got to run to the Grand. That does more wear and tear in her car than driving to Halifax. So, I mean, the $300 is probably a valid. There's no problem there, and I've got no difficulty with it, but I think, again, the parameter should be there for it. it should be so in what was the question? Well, is it not my making an observation. My, my question, my observation is, is that we need a policy for all town staff with regard to the car vehicle allowances. We should have a policy in place, and I'm assuming we do, if because again, I realize there's these credit cards. There should be a policy in place for the credit cards, and there should be a policy in place for the mayor's fund, and there's no reason why we can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, that I know we're in, and that could be, as the CAO pointed out, could be easily wrapped into this new travel allowance policy that we're doing, and uh, I would love to be notified when that group's going to meet again. I would, didn't get a notification of the last one, and I, I'd love to know that, because I wouldn't mind to sit in on that. don't want to participate. We just we did just, the taxi one, just so you know. We yeah, didn't so, get to that yeah. Yet. so I'd like to, I'd like to look at, like to be there for that, because there's some points that are being made. And I mean, let's clean up the ship a little bit, and I think that's a great way and everybody knows where they stand and there's not going to be any this or that or questions and then the policy is in place. It's like our procurement policy. We did a beautiful job on that. Cleaned up that side of the house last council. Perfect. We can now say this is what we're doing and this is doing it and why. So, so uh, I'd like to make a motion, as this is a committee of the whole, that we recommend to staff that they start the development of a policy for one, the mayor's fund, two, the usage of town credit cards, and three, for any travel allowance that are used by the town. With the understanding that this could be all rolled into the travel and expense policy if staff so deem. You know, so that gives the flexibility to the CAO who may say, well, gee, we can just roll this all in the same policy, which is fine. You're not stuck with more policy. So that is my motion just to get this on the table and, and let's, let's clean it up. Moved and seconded. Any more discussion? All, all those in or, or before I vote, are you good with that? Is like, there anything on, off you need to? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that. Okay. All right. I, I just sometimes we do stuff and there's questions no, no, that need no, to be I, answered. I, I thought there was I thought there was a question coming, but if yeah, no so question, did I. Then, but that's then, yeah. <laughs> Okay, all the, okay, go ahead. Um, is it, this question is to the CAO, if I may. Yes, go ahead. Uh, if, we, uh, if, we did not, if we did not change the way it is now, what problems do you foresee us getting into? What, pro, what, what do you see, do, do you foresee any, any, any uh, 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 misuse or abuse? Well, no. To me, it, it go ahead. Uh, to me, uh, it's not an issue of misuse or abuse. 
but you know, everyone who's sitting around the council table today wasn't here seven years ago. And so, you know, I, w I was, but what if I wasn't? So we'd have these, these things in place and we wouldn't necessarily know the background, the, ra the rationale, how they come into place, any idea of, so policy puts, puts it on paper, makes it clear. And so your successors will understand why these things exist and they can, and what the parameters are and they may change those parameters or you may change those parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, I think anything that you do that is of an ongoing nature, it should be done by policy. And so <clears throat> this, is, this is good governance. Yeah. No issue with it at all. Okay. And, and, and I don't know that anything prior that so, it, so, yeah. so what it's happens not on paper. No, no, oh look, there's there's stuff and this is some of it and this is this oh, is part of the process. Yeah. So the the um, what happens if you don't have policy is is happening right now. Is is questions are asked and people are, are finding out things and they're they're saying, Well I didn't know that, right? So the policy is is the rule book, right? It's it's what do we do? How do we operate our mm -hmm. stuff? And so it, it should be done. Uh, historically, it has not been done. You know, we're looking at procurement uh, policy we did last or a couple of years ago. That's that's in great shape now, but our our travel and expense policy uh, is you know about that long, and yeah, it's, you know, a dangerous it's, and it's, one. it's antiquated. And so we're working on one. I have a I have a template that is I think 26 pages long, mm -hmm. because that stuff you know it's kind of complicated, yeah. but it will set clear rules. If, if it's adopted by council yeah. in, the, in the near future, it will set clear rules around things like credit cards and travel allowances and yeah. that sort of thing. It's, it's, um, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's just clear, it's, it is the right thing to do. Doesn't mean anything changes, just means it's in the form of a policy. Everybody, everybody can understand it. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, you know, 20 years yeah, from now. The, if yeah. I may speak to this, it, just one more. Certainly. If I can just stretch right. this out a little no. further. Uh, you know, this has been an ongoing, and, and those have been around the table for this being their, their second term recently. Um, you'll know that we've we've struggled a bit with getting policies and bylaws updated because, frankly, it, it is it is time-consuming business. It is it is stuff that you need to focus on to, to work through. When you're talking about a 26-page procurement or not procurement, sorry, travel and expense policy, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to sort of be able to sit down and work your way through it at one at one time. And that takes a block of time, which is awfully difficult to find, uh, to and and, <coughs> and focus. So, <coughs> excuse me. One of the things I've talked to my colleagues about, because you know there isn't in some cases there's really not much reason why our policies should be different than Argyles or the municipality of the District of Yarmouth. We've talked between myself and my colleagues about the idea of doing a project together where we would, we would employ somebody uh, for a year, uh, somebody with maybe a master's in public administration to come in and create policies and bylaws mm -hmm. for us, update our policies and bylaws, work with, work with us and focus entirely on that job because if, if we don't have that focus, we will be doing this you know, forever, and and there are. I mean, you look at our policies and bylaws. There are some that haven't been touched in, since forever. So, mm -hmm. um, it's a big, big job. Yep. Councillor McIsaac. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, j just to let you know, this this thing come at the spur of the moment. I've been thinking about this for quite some time, and I met with Jeff yesterday for about an hour, and uh, to clarify things and, and get things. So it, it wasn't just done bang that I'm putting this on the agenda. It's been, uh, you know, it's been a, a thought of mine for, for a few years actually. And uh, this, is, this is the time I thought was right to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. But I, one thing I do do before I ask these questions, I always like to go see the CAO and ask these questions to him because I, I don't want to make anybody think that I am picking on anybody or making anybody uh, to discriminate against anybody or whatever. It just so happens to be you're in the chair. I could be asked, uh, asked questions about you. You could ask questions about me. And I, I would go to Jeff and ask him first, is this appropriate to do this? And we need, I think we need this, I think we need that. And through his guidance, I either leave it on or take it off. Yesterday, I took things off that I, that I asked, and I, he said it was more appropriate that I do this, and I'll, I will get back to you personally. And, and that's, that's how I like to do council stuff. I, 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 
go to him first because I don't want to make anybody, you know, look silly or foolish or anything because I wouldn't want anybody to do that to me. And that's the way that I, that I do things. And if I uh, ruffle feathers at some time, it's nothing personal. It's just part of what the questions, as a counselor, everybody has the right to ask. And that's the only reason I ask these questions, to get the information. I got the information yesterday, but in order to bring it out to council and in the public, you have to ask these questions in public because that's the place to bring it into a public forum. So anyway, Your Worship, that's why I ask the questions. Thank you. Did, didn't matter to me why you asked the question. It's all, it's all, um, I, no, exactly. Okay, Councillor Dawes. Thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. And um, now I understand. Now I understand more through 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 this yeah. through this discussion because all 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 I knew, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. Um, uh, all I saw was Mayor's Fun. I don't know what that was all about, but now through the discussion, yeah. I understand more. Yeah. Um, and uh, town credit cards, as as Councillor McIsaac just said, he he did speak with with the CAO prior and decided to take it off the agenda, but yet it is now part of the motion that's being put on the table, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah. So it's, it was off, but it's back on again. I don't understand well, it's that now. Motion. It's just part of the motion. It's just part of the motion. It's not that it's on the agenda or not. I, I, it's not a it's, yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. All right, thank you. It's, yep, it's my flu. Um, you have to have a little, little patience with me. Sorry. We good? Okay. Any more discussion? The question's been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. Anything else on this that we had to do before we go in camera? Good. Okay. Motion to go in camera? <coughs> Wait a second. You had salt scapes on there. Can, can we do it quickly? Go ahead. Uh, very fast. Um, you were, and maybe Sandy may want to comment, Councillor Dennis may want to comment. Um, we agreed to purchase two booths, which I'm really glad we did in the end. And yes, I understand is going to be purchasing the third. Uh, so Yarmouth will have a very good, a very strong presence at Saltscapes. Uh, what we did in the past, and we did last year, is myself and Councillor McIsaac went up. Um, and I think we also had Carol Hill as well went up, assisted us. And Sandy, I think you went up with was part of Yazda delegation, I believe, or did you go up for the town? How did we town? So I'm wondering if a motion is in place to approve the funding for those people to go up because it's we're there like for three solid days running this booth, these booths, oh, okay. you know. So my motion would basically be that we approve the funding to send representation to Saltscapes. Uh, you know, to work the, the booth for the three-day uh, session at Saltscapes. Okay. You can ask a question. I got a question, too. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Want to put your... So, yes, uh, <coughs> we're not going to participate in the, in the Saltscapes, but they... There, there was an extra booth, and uh, my understanding, Sandy can speak, I know Sandy's quite ill, so uh, my understanding, talking to Charles Roby show, we had a spare booth that was left, and uh, Charles realized the value of, of saltscapes, and so did the ASDA board, because it's huge. It's probably the largest travel show in Atlantic Canada. Uh, last year, we had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of visitors, uh, but it's a, it's a hard walk. It's a hard walk. I mean, it's, it's intense. Uh, we're literally going there 10 hours a day so we do it in shifts like we drop a shift schedule so that nobody's there because I'll tell you on your feet for four days just panning out in our case sardines uh, and doing their stuff now we work very closely with Yasna now we'll have a little joint planning committee that w us and Yasna will sit down with to see how they're going to do it but I do know Charles picked it for the presence just to give you an idea of the intensity here uh, the Annapolis Valley Chamber of Commerce Okay, the Annapolis Valley Chamber of Commerce has bought 12 booths. That's their presence, huge, absolutely huge. Uh, the town of w Windsor has four booths. So there's a, quite a presence there. And uh, what I'll do, uh, Councilor Mooney and Council, I'll send out the floor plan of where we are in relation. There has been a huge push by the towns to have that presence because they realize this is one heck of a way to sell your community. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'll tell you, it's really helped us a lot. So, okay. so I just wanted to put that on the floor. Thank you for your second. So, so who made the motion? 
You second it, Councillor Dennis. Did you want to have anything to say about that? Since she, you're with, she designed yeah. that oh, I'm, I'm good. We're ju we just have to decide on who's going. Okay, who's going and how? How many? How much money? I mean, you can pass a motion. I don't understand the motion. Oh. Okay, so what are your? So what? I need to hold it. First of all, first of all, oh my goodness, God. <laughs> okay. Councillor Dennis, you were you were saying what was your question? Who who's going? Okay, you were asking. Uh, my question is uh, is the is the is the town paying for everyone? Is the town the sole source of? Okay, and and then you. Sorry, I'm trying to keep track with that. Okay, questions. I'll I'll try to frame this. Uh, yes, the, what we did last year, if we did last year's model, the town looked after the expenses of the individuals who went up, okay? Uh, and that's how we did it in the past. I did not purposely put names in because we'll have slots. I don't know if I haven't even mentioned it to Councillor McCoskey because he's even available. He may be at sea for all we know and Councillor Dennis may not. So I thought if we just looked after, you know, looking after the expenses. But normally, I believe it was last year, we had one, two, three, four. It was a team of, team of four is what it was. Well, we actually have five because Carol Hill had her husband, Bob, was with us as well. So we had a team of five there. So that's how we did it over the three days. Okay. So are we doing five? Okay, uh, Councillor Dawes, go ahead. Um, I think it's marvelous. I remember when I, when I went, I went up. I volunteered. Town didn't pay anything. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, is anyone, are there any volunteers that, have, that are signing up to go, to go up for the good of their community okay. and their home? Oh, sorry. So, so my question is still, the motion is, is to pay for it, but I have no idea how many people, how many... Four individuals. Do we need a number? I'm going to ask yes. you this. We yes. need a number is what yes. I'm trying to say. We and can't just... I, I, had, we, I had another question related to this. By all means. Is in, in the past there have been other expenses related to saltscapes? Yes. Around the, the booth setup, design, backdrops, what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's an additional budget needed for that. So our only costs here for saltscapes will be the registration for the booths and travel expenses for four people, if, that, if that, that's crystal clear. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Worship. There would be one other thing. We did take one of the banners, take, took the banner out and replaced it with the other banner for the Royal thingy last year. So we need to put that back in okay. that, the Met. So I, I, I don't think that's more than 50 bucks or whatever that's gonna well, be. Those backdrop things? Yeah, the backdrop thing, because you only have three, there are actually four of them. So we'll need that one, and that's the only cost. I don't know, Sandy, do you think of it? Because we all donated stuff to go into the booth, and Sandy's the most awesome decorator in the world. So Sandy looked after setting it up in that, and, uh, and then the product uh, that we give away, uh, last year, Phil LeBlanc, and he already committed that he would give 2,000 cans of kippers. So we use that as our promotional giveaway. So Go ahead. Uh, I think last and year or the year before, didn't we do up a, a leaflet or a brochure or something? We did print up something, but we have the ASDA this year. So, I mean, the ASDA brochure, this, that's, we shouldn't really need it. I wouldn't think so. You know, we, we have the ASDA one because okay. if you recall, uh, Jeff, that year, the ASDA one wasn't ready. Okay. And that's why we did it that year. So we really, the ASDA one is really good. I mean, I just want to make sure we've got it covered. No, no, I, I agree with you. I think you're looking at just expenses. Now, and maybe we'll all sit down and look at that and then, and the group will look, and just in case there's something else. I can't think of anything other than, because we've, we've kind of built up our resources over the years. Okay. So we're in good shape. Councillor Dennis? Yeah, Mr. LeBlanc has given us the, the kippers and also, um, Don Smith has given us labels to put on the kippers again this year. So this year we're going to have the late, we have the late, I have the labels now. So we need volunteers to go down and have them done before we go to Saltscapes this oh year. Oh boy, can I find you some of them? And also, um, <laughs> Seafest, Don's, we're also going to have brochures for Seafest to give out too. So, because we want to promote mm -hmm. what we have oh, yeah, going no on question. in the town. Good, good. yeah. Very good. Yeah. 
Um, can I make a suggestion on the stickers? Um, last night, uh, oh, escapes me, the lady from Life Skills, Phil, help me out. Yeah. Sherry approached me that they would love a project to do now at Life Skills. This would be a perfect project for them. I was wondering, maybe have them do it. Uh, and that would that be a nice project for them and we maybe make a small cash donation to life skills. Uh, it's, it's a very simple thing. I know last year, man, we put some pile of stickers on. I don't want to go through that again. Yeah, so that'd be the trick. So if we show Sherry what we want, if, if I could, I'll put, add that to the motion it, with the agreement of the seconder that we ask Aramith Life Skills if they would look after applying the stickers to the cans before they're shipped. That though, well, we'd have to check because they'd have to uh, deliver the cans to there. Unless they go there. So he was going to set up a table down there she, she'd probably for take her, me her to go down. down. She'd probably take her people down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 we could try that. Take her people down and do great okay. Okay. Perfect. Let's. Uh, anything else, CAO? Just if, if, if you want to give a grant to somebody or whatever, then you should consider what that means. Yeah. Let's do the first motion first. The first motion is for the expenses for four people for saltscapes. It's moved and seconded. No, we don't yet. We don't because okay. they Okay, so any more discussion? The you're, you're, we're, the, the motion Go ahead. If I can, Your Worship, just to, for Councillor Dawes, I, I, we have we have six weeks between now and Saltscapes. I could be dead. Uh, so if we have a finite, most seriously, I mean, I, I, what do we do? We move a motion with me on it. Be great. Cheers. Uh, be a motion. Be a motion with my name on it. You'd have to come back and do it again. So I'm suggesting that the motion read that we fund up to four people to attend Saltscapes, and then then the CAO would get a list, and then he'd know who's going. You know what I mean? And then cl closer to it. Is, is the cost? Are we already determining the cost of what four people are going to? Uh, uh, the cost of uh, how much is going to cost for four people to go? Is that what we're determining today? Is that what we're voting on? I'm sorry to hold you all up. I no, apologize. No, no, you're not holding us up. We're t I'm trying to to get the numbers like you are too, but I don't know that the numbers are going are we to be. On, are we only voting on on the number of people? We are not at this time of voting on on the amount on the amount on the cost that the town that the town is willing to cover well, to the, send these four people up the cost would be um, to, to pay their travel expenses so it would be their mileage their hotel their meals for the for the duration of the event yeah. all right all right which would be? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm okay. thick today. I'm. 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 I, I see. I feel as though I'm. I'm chasing my own tail. Okay, I'll help you. Um, I'll help you. Okay. So you can do the math. You're, we. If you travel to Halifax with the town of Yarmouth, you get a set amount, which is two hundred and seventy-five dollars. You don't claim mileage. It's a set amount, counselor. So you have that. Yes. You you then have hotel accommodations. We have special arrangements in hotels, uh, special rates at the CO ranges uh, through UNSM. I think it's usually $125 for the rooms. The room numbers vary because Sandy, uh, Councillor Dennis, for example, who goes up to set the booth, usually goes up ahead. Uh, others of us go up later, so we jiggle that, so we try to keep that. So you're looking at probably two to three that, nights per person. All right, we're we looking per at group. approximately two to $3,000 for the four people. Is that what we're looking at? You're probably looking at that, yeah, three to four. The same whatever it was last year is what I'm saying. I don't know what it was last year, please. So I'm, I'm assuming, I'd say, let's say, I think Phil mentioned three, 4,000 probably is what you're looking at for this, yeah. All right, good, thank you very much. Sorry it was so no. painful. No, 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 it's, it's, and it's, I hate this, but it's probably helpful for you too. You're looking for, we're, we're looking to yeah, know what I mean, we're spending. Absolutely. And not that. the extras. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're good with the motion. Yep. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Contrary? Motion carried. All right? Oh, second motion. I hate to drag this out. The second motion would be that uh, that staff uh, be asked to inquire with Yarmouth Life Skills if they would be willing to apply the stickers to the cans uh, with IMO Seafoods for a small cash donation. Got to put that from in the there from the mayor's fund. And you know what? That's what it's there for. 
Okay. <laughs> no, it's there. That's what it's there for right now. Okay. Any discussion on that? Oh, you made the motion. Sandy seconded. Any further discussion on that? Question. Question has been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary. Motion carried. Now, may I have a motion to go? In can I, can I now make a motion? Yes. Okay. So move. Let's move inside. Are we moving inside? Let's go. <coughs> Did you get all that, Tina? Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, how do we get off of this? Uh, 